The boss is a polarizing figure in the world of Metal Gear. She's known as the mother of special forces in the US. She's known in Russia as Voyevoda or Warlord. She's known as joy to her fellow comrades from the Cobra unit for expressing a smile and happiness in the middle of battle. She sacrificed her life for the sake of her country and her duty, forgave constant betrayals by her superiors and remained loyal to the end. Without a doubt, her sacrifice is what spurred Big Boss to go on and remake the world in the way that she desired. Her legacy, the boss's will. The boss was the daughter of one of the founders of the Wiseman's Committee, a secret group of most wealthy and powerful minds from the United States, Russia, and China. Around 1922, in a secret meeting following World War I, the Wiseman's Committee formed a think tank organization known as the Philosophers. The boss's father revealed to the young Joy what the organization was really about. As one of the last original members of the Wise Men's Committee, he told her that the philosophers became bent on corruption, deceit, government manipulation, world terrorism, and more. Shortly after revealing this information, the boss's father was assassinated by the philosophers. By the time she met Naked Snake in 1950, who was then only known to her as Jack, she began to develop a hand-to-hand -hand combat style with him called CQC, close quarters combat. Snake was proficient at it, but the boss had clearly better technique, speed, and overall advantage. In 1943, the boss was given a mission to infiltrate Los Alamos facility and assassinate one of the top scientists on the Manhattan Project, John von Neumann. He was believed to be a Nazi spy, and her orders were to make his death look like an accident. Just before the operation, the boss found out that she was pregnant. The father was the sorrow a powerful medium who could talk to the spirits of the dead and her lover. During a shootout on her way out of the facility, a bullet grazed the side of her brain and for the next three months, she fell into a coma. The boss resented the fact that she failed her mission, but when the bombs fell on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the boss felt deeply hurt and responsible for all the lives lost due to her failure to stop the Manhattan Project. She felt she caused the Cold War by failing to prevent the atomic genocide. In 1944, during the D-Day landings at Normandy, the boss and her Cobra unit were tasked with destroying several V-2 rocket installations near Juno Beach. During this attack, she was shot in the abdomen and was forced to give birth via cesarean to a baby boy, the Sorrow's son, right in the middle of the battlefield. Soon after, her baby was taken by the philosophers. The C-section left a snake-shaped scar on her torso, a proof that she was once a mother. Her dream of a united world began when she took her first flight in 1961 into space during the Mercury Project. The mission was to discover how well the human body would react to space. She was unofficially the first person in space and survived, but had to endure a significant amount of radiation. As she floated in space, she looked out and saw the world as it was. The world was whole, yet petty governments and the politics of the times kept the people warring apart. She saw a world without borders and had a dream that the world would be and should be united as one. In 1962, she was sent on a mission to eliminate the sorrow, the father of their only child and the man that she loved. The philosophers forced them to participate in this task by threatening to kill their child if they both survived. The sorrow decided that she must go on, and he must die. Then, in 1964, her opportunity to realize her dream, her will, began to take shape when she was sent on a mission to recover the philosopher's legacy. The philosopher's legacy was a large fund of money from United States, Russia, and China, created during World War II. One hundred billion dollars, laundered through various banks around the world. It was enough to fight the World War II five times over. The legacy was in the hands of Colonel Yevgeny Borisovich Volgin in the mountain fortress of Grozny Grad near Tselenoyarsk, Russia. The boss defected to Volgin with her Cobra unit all while playing a double agent still being loyal to the US. The mission was named the Virtuous Mission. The objective was for the boss to recover the philosopher's legacy and for Jack, codenamed Naked Snake, her protege, was tasked with the recovery of Nikolai Stepanovich Sokolov, 
the top weapon scientist that was in charge of creating the Shagahod, an accelerated tank that could launch a nuclear missile anywhere on the planet. The boss brought two Davy Crockett portable nuclear warheads and a launcher as a gift and proof of her loyalty to her new host, Colonel Volgan. The mission was going as planned, but then the unthinkable happened. Volgan wanted to make sure the boss was tied to him and had no way back to her country and launched one of the warheads to blow up Sokolov's former development facility, killing innocent Russians and sparking an international incident in the process. The B-52 Flying Fortress that was used as the operating flying headquarters for the mission was spotted by the Russians and the Soviets assumed that the Americans dropped a nuke on Russian soil. President Lyndon Johnson and Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev held secret talks in the aftermath and it was decided that the boss was to blame for Volgan's actions and had to be eliminated. To assassinate the boss, they would send her best student, Naked Snake, the one person who knew her best and was in essence her best friend, would be her executioner. As part of the mission, the Philosopher's Legacy had to be recovered and the Cobra unit, the Shagohot and Volgan needed to be eliminated. The boss knew once again that she was discarded and betrayed by her government. Why'd you defect? I didn't. I'm loyal to the end, to my purpose. What about you, Jack? What's it going to be? Loyalty to your country or loyalty to me? Your country or your old mentor? The mission or your beliefs? Your duty to your unit or your personal feelings? As the mission went on, Snake showed why he truly was the boss's apprentice and the potential he had as a covert operative and a future leader. One by one, each of the Cobras fell to him, as well as Colonel Volgan. In the end, Snake faced the boss. If Snake failed to kill her, she would take the Philosopher's Legacy and remake the world in her image, one and united. The world must be made whole again. The philosophers must be reunited. I will devote my skills to that purpose. And with the Colonel's money, I will achieve that end. And she gave him a choice. Loyalty to your country or loyalty to me. There's a saying in the Orient. Loyalty to the end. Do you know what it means? Being patriotic. It means devoting yourself to your country. As long as we have loyalty to the end, there's no point in believing in anything, even in those we love. Snake fulfilled his mission and took out the boss. There's only room for one boss and one snake. With this act, he would honor his master and become the soldier she taught him to be. He would take her place and continue her dream of a world without borders. She saved the world from a World War III and took all the blame to the grave. She became known in the United States as a traitor to her people and to her unit. In the Soviet Union, she is known as a monster who unleashed Armageddon. She knew that forcing Snake to kill her would mentally scar him for the rest of his life, as his loyalty and devotion to the boss was the only love he knew. This would make him into the soldier that he needed to become. Their connection was deeper than mother and son but she placed her loyalty to the mission and to her country above all else. With the mission's success, Snake would be awarded the title of Big Boss and would go on fighting and carrying on the boss's dying wish. But her sacrifice went beyond the call of duty. She was called a mother to the special forces, but lost her only son. Her nickname was Joy, but after killing her love, all she felt was sorrow. She was constantly abandoned and betrayed by her country, yet never felt betrayed or abandoned. She knew that her duty was to her country. No matter what, no matter what happened, her devotion could not be questioned. The boss was a true patriot.